Welcome back to the Wolf Pit. Today I'm going to make Guinness Stout braised corned beef that simply falls apart into pulled corned beef. Then we're going to turn this melt in your mouth tender and rich corned beef into the best Rubens you've ever had. It's really easy to make and delicious. So let's get started. I'm using a typical store bought four pound corned beef brisket flat today, but this recipe can be done with a point cut too, which in my opinion has more flavor than the flat to begin with. If you can wait until after St. Patty's Day, you can also find corned beef on sale dirt cheap compared to the astronomical $5.99 a pound I paid for this one. Now remove the corned beef from the packaging and save the seasoning packet and then pat dry with paper towels. And now I'm going to sear the corned beef in a large skillet over medium high heat with a little bit of vegetable oil. This step is totally optional but it does add more flavor to the finished product. And you just want to brown it for four to five minutes on both sides and don't forget the sides of the corned beef as well. The more caramelization you add, the more flavor you add. For a full printable copy of this recipe and more corned beef recipes, visit thewolfpit.com. Once the corned beef is browned on all sides, I've transferred it to a casserole dish since my skillet wasn't big enough for the meat and the braising liquid. Then I'm adding the contents of the seasoning packet that comes with the corned beef along with some additional pickling spice. I'll strain the liquid after the corned beef is done, but if you have cheesecloth, you can simply wrap everything into it and save the straining step. Next I'm adding granulated onion, garlic, and lots of black pepper. Last but not least, for the braising liquid, I'm adding Guinness Extra Stout. I know I'm going to have people that don't drink or use alcohol in their food. If you don't want to use the stout as the braising liquid, believe it or not, you can use leftover black coffee or any kind of cola soda will work as long as it's not diet. But keep in mind, if you do use soda, it's going to leave a sweet taste to the corned beef. That's either a good or a bad thing, depending on your taste. Now tightly wrap it in aluminum foil and place it into a preheated 350 degree oven for two and a half to three hours. After two hours, I pulled it out of the oven and checked for tenderness with two forks, and as you can tell, it's still pretty tough. So I flipped it over, rewrapped it, and put it back into the oven at 350 degrees for another hour. Those three hours had to be the longest, most miserable three hours I've had in a long time. The aroma throughout the house was simply incredible. But after the long three hours, the corned beef finally gave up. And like you've heard me say before with roasts, if you can stick a fork in them and they twist like spaghetti, they're done. Now remove the corned beef from the casserole dish and strain the braising liquid. Then return the corned beef to the casserole dish, take two forks and pull it apart just like you would pulled pork. And remove and discard any excess fat. At this point, I almost took a knife and ran it through the meat to chop it up into smaller pieces because I thought it would be stringy. But after tasting several pieces, it melted in your mouth and there was no need to chop it up. Now once all the corned beef is pulled, the excess fat is removed and the sauce has been strained, add the sauce back into the corned beef and give it one last mix. Now at this point, you can act like a caveman and eat it by the handfuls like I was trying to do until my wife stopped me, or you can make Reuben sandwiches, which is what we're going to do now. My original plan was to make a Reuben sandwich that resembled a pulled pork sandwich. I just wanted to do something different than your average Reuben sandwich. The pulled corned beef in place of the pulled pork, the sauerkraut in place of the coleslaw, the Russian dressing in place of the barbecue sauce. I looked for some sort of rye roll or even a rye bagel for over a week and nobody makes them. You guys know me, I don't bake and I hate everything about baking. But to make this the way I wanted to, I decided to make rye Kaiser rolls. Three hours later, I confirmed every single reason I ever had not to ever bake again. These rolls were beyond fail. So I picked up some hearty everything bagels and a loaf of classic rye bread. I toasted the bagels in some butter and then added a mountain of the pulled corned beef. And this doesn't just heat the corned beef through, but it browns the bottom of the corned beef just enough to give it a little bit more flavor. Now add some sauerkraut and you can add as little or as much sauerkraut as you like. I love sauerkraut, so I'm adding a lot. Top that off with Swiss cheese. Add a lid until the corned beef and sauerkraut are heated through and the cheese is melted. One Reuben down, one to go.
And now for a more traditional toasted Reuben. A nice fresh piece of rye bread toasting in butter. Add lots of corned beef. Followed by Swiss cheese. Lots of sauerkraut. And of course, another piece of rye bread. Give it a flip and let it toast until the cheese is melted. And then top them both with Russian dressing. And for some reason, Russian dressing is pretty hard to find around here. Ken's Steakhouse is the only one I could find, which is good, but if you can't find it, just use Thousand Island, or even better yet, deli mustard. Cut them both in half, and then serve them with a nice fresh kosher dill pickle, which I did have, but I forgot to put on the cutting board. And there you have it, Guinness Stout Braised Pulled Corned Beef Rubens done two ways. I really thought I would like the Reuben on the bagel better because it was different. But the Reuben on rye with caraway seeds was the winner for me. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you give this a try. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe and come back every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday for new recipes and cooking videos.